Big football news from Florham Park, and very happy to be joined by our SNY football insider, Ralph Vacchiano, and Connor Hughes, who covers the Jets for The Athletic. All right, so Ralph, we're in the midst of free agency, and the draft is over a month away, so does this deal surprise you? It does. Now, I did think that there would be a point where the Jets would try to trade up in the draft. I thought that they really wanted a quarterback here, and sitting at six, there's no guarantee that one was going to be there. But doing it six weeks before the draft seemed a little bit risky to me because you don't necessarily know how the top couple of picks are going to play. So I, I really thought that uh, I did not see this coming. I'm surprised. I think it's a very bold move for Mike McCagnin. And I think part of that probably has to do with what the Buffalo Bills did. You know, when they moved from where they were and they got up there right around the teens, I think they got to 12. I think that might have not necessarily spooked Mike McCagnin, but it might have alerted him that they're trying to do something like the Philadelphia Eagles did not long ago when they were able to acquire Carson Wentz. Because you saw Howie Roseman go from when they were, got into the teens, and then he made his jump to number two. And, you know, the Bills are another team like the Jets looking for a young quarterback, very interested in the, in the guys that are up there that I think Mike McCagnin said, you know what, if I don't go to three, the Bills are going to go to three, and then I'm going to be without my quarterback. So it was a little bit reactionary in a way, kind of uh, he, he saw something coming, so he made the jump first. But, I mean, what does this really say about Mike McCagnin? This is a big move for him to be making. Yeah. Well, I think it says that he knows that all the money he's spent in free agency and everything else that he's done doesn't matter if he doesn't have a quarterback. They got Teddy Bridgewater. It's a one-year flyer. He's 25 years old. Maybe that works out, but you can't guarantee it. Josh McCown is going to be 39 years old. They still need that young quarterback of the future. That's everything to this franchise. I think Mike McCagnin has known it. This, this franchise has been searching for one for decades, and this is his legacy pick. This is his way to ensure that they'll have a chance to be a contender. And, and the crazy thing about this is that he's had three drafts now. He is no closer to finding a franchise quarterback than the guy he <laughs> replaced in John Idzik. And I mean, you say that name around Jets, Jets land, and it's, you know, he who shall not be named. So, you know, I think that, like you said, McCagnin realized that the time is out. He got that two-year contract extension, but it was kind of given with an asterisk that if he doesn't get a quarterback and he doesn't get a quarterback now, He's not going to see year five. He's not going to see year six on that deal. So this was a, a, something that came into play when, when they weren't able to get Kirk Cousins and he went to Minnesota. The Jets had to get a guy in the draft, and this is a, his way of assuring that he gets his guy. All right, well, speaking of, McCagnan was at the pro days for both Josh Rosen and Baker Mayfield this past week. Do you feel they have one quarterback really targeted? Well, I don't think so because I think it would be a little too risky to target just one guy. If you think about that, they move up to number three, and let's say they targeted Sam Sam Darnold. Well, there's still a chance that he could end up going one or two. You don't know how it's going to play. Even if he's convinced that the Browns and the Giants aren't going to take a quarterback, as you mentioned, the Buffalo Bills are looming. They could jump up. I think this is more of a sign that he's got three guys that he's pretty confident in that one of them will be the Jets quarterback. But I mean, Connor and R Ralph as well, are we even convinced that it's going to be a quarterback? Are we sure that he is going to go for that position? Yeah, I, I think at this point, again, it comes down to the fact that they didn't get Kirk Cousins. And I know Teddy Bridgewater looked like a guy who could potentially be a franchise quarterback two, three years ago, but you can't trust anything when you're talking about that name. I mean, this is a guy who has not played football in essentially two years. I mean, you can't go into the season saying he's our guy. Josh McCown's going to be 39. So I think McCagden realizes again that he has to come out of his come out with a quarterback. And if it wasn't if he wasn't making this move, he made this move for a quarterback because if not, he's going to sit at six. He can take Quentin Nelson. He can take Minka Fitzpatrick. There's a, there's a slew of players he can take. This move was made for a signal caller. Now, I think as we all know, the Jets um, haven't had the greatest success, you know, <laughs> with second round draft picks, as you can see. But was it a risk giving up so many picks, especially when the team is in this rebuilding mode? Well, sure, it's a risk because if they get the wrong player here, it's going to look ridiculous that they gave up this much to get him. But if they get Get a franchise quarterback. Every team throughout this league knows that there is no price that's too high to pay for that franchise quarterback. The Jets have been looking for one for decades. In the, the 13, 14 years since the Giants drafted Eli Manning, the Jets have had 13 starters, and none of them have been very good. Imagine what it would have meant How to them. How bad does that sound? It sounds <laughs> terrible. It sounds terrible. But just imagine what it would have meant to them. They could have traded five or six <laughs> picks to move up and get Eli Manning or Ben Roethlisberger in that draft. It would have changed the franchise for 15 years. So if they get their guy, no one will care what they gave up. And that's that's the whole philosophy when it comes to drafting franchise quarterbacks, as, as you touched upon, is that 
If you believe that this guy, whoever it is, it can be a franchise quarterback, there is no spot that is too early to go get him. There is no amount of picks that you can give up to go get him. That number doesn't exist. You think, I mean, truthfully, you think about that 2016 draft where the Rams went up to go get Goff and the Eagles went up to go get Wentz. If they could redo those trades, they'd give up more. I mean, truthfully, they would give up more, and there would probably be teams below them knowing how these two guys panned out. They would give up even more than they were. I mean, that's what the thing is that franchise quarterbacks in the NFL are everything. If you have a franchise as quarterback, you are a contender. Look at the Colts. You take away Andrew Luck, you add in Andrew Luck. They're a Super Bowl contender or they're picking top three. I mean, that's what a franchise quarterback can do. So if the Jets believe that any of these guys can be their franchise quarterback, truthfully, they probably should give it up more than what they did if they know it's going to be that guy. But again, in the, in the in the NFL draft and in the NFL, and one of the reasons why every team doesn't have a franchise quarterback is you just don't know. Yeah. So that's, that's the risk that plays into it all. Now, of course, Giants with the number two pick in the draft. What could this mean for them? Well, it's really interesting because they are looking for a quarterback, and I still do believe that they're going to take one if they believe that one of these guys is a franchise quarterback. Now, Dave Gettleman has talked about how the number two pick should be a Hall of Fame type player. I say Saquon. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, look, that's a possibility too yeah. if he likes him enough, but I think if he's thinking Saquon, he might be in a position where, you know what, somebody else might want to come up and get that quarterback. We talked about the Buffalo Bills earlier. Maybe they offer both of their first round picks. They also have, I think, a couple of seconds and a couple of thirds they can certainly put together a big package the Giants are in the, really the driver's seat everybody now knows a quarterback is probably going to go to the Browns at one and four quarterbacks going to the Jets at three if you want a quarterback you're going to need to get up to the Giants spot if they're willing to deal they could really turn it into a big haul